Last week, it was a rumor that Barstool was going to get acquired by uh, Penn National Gaming, which is uh, a casino operator. Casino operator. They own like uh, racetracks, uh, uh, horse racetracks, okay. and uh, basically anything gambling related they are into i think they're it's funny their stock went up so one funny thing so they acquired barstool for 450 million dollars um the the structure of the deal is basically i believe they're putting 100 million cash up front um and then in another year they buy more to own 50 percent of the company and then they have the option to buy the whole thing something like that but uh it seems to be an all-cash deal um, and they're owning a majority of stake with options to own the whole thing. Um, but the funny thing is basically they put in a hundred million to Barstool and today their stock went up over 600 million in, do you, uh, I'm kind of curious, do you, do you happen to know how much was uh, Barstool or the valuation when they, uh, they bought it for, for 50, but what was the revenues or so like four time revenues? Yeah, their or? revenues last year, it's estimated about a hundred million revenue. All right, so you bought like a four, four and a half point, four and a half time revenues. Yeah. And they were profitable <clears> last <throat> year, apparently, for the first time. Okay. Um, so they, do not, they do have, I mean, I actually, I, had to go, I didn't know much about Barstool's variety of content on podcasts, but they are huge. They, are, they yes. have a lot of so stuff going on. One interesting thing is I was looking at some of the podcasting <clears> rankings, <throat> and we actually talked about this a little bit last week, but as far as sports podcasting, Barstool is number one right. um, above ESPN. Yeah, well, and so is Bill Simmons' ringer, which we will discuss in a few minutes. If I were to make a, I'm actually considering buying some stock. This oh, is not no. financial advice <laughs> in pen because let's put it very plainly. Barstool, which has more reach on podcasting and to younger audiences under 30 than ESPN does right now. Right. And ESPN's valuation is roughly 50 billion. Well, I mean. So that's 100x Barstool. So are you talking Barstool overall, adding up all the podcasts on ESPN, adding up all the podcasts, yes. or you're talking individual shows? No, all the podcasts. Uh -huh. Not only are the top shows of Barstool way bigger than any top shows of ESPN, but overall, I believe Barstool has 8 million plus unique a month listeners, and ESPN has about 6 point something. Are they also uh, YouTube uh, programming? I oh, mean, yes. podcast yeah, for yeah, Barstool? They're, they're multimedia. Right. You know, they started as a blog actually year years ago. Right. Um and then they started getting into podcasting, video, everything. Okay, so they, and, I'm assuming they have obviously video downloads and all the stuff and they have their own video programming. Yeah, and now that they have this multi billion dollar gambling giant behind them and the funding, obviously they just got a hundred million in cash. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that they're gonna do even more and more and more. And the whole company pen is worth about I think as of this morning with the valuation increase, about three and a half billion valuation. Uh, and like I said, ESPN alone is worth 50. Now, obviously ESPN has a ton of properties. So don't get me wrong. Right. But, uh, if I could see Barstool's valuation being 450 now going another 10 X being worth 5 billion, say five, everything on now. Barstool is free. Uh, no, no subscription based. That's not true. They, most of it is, but they actually have Barstool Gold, or I think is what it's called. Um, and it's a, they started it last year. It's a premium subscription to certain okay. content so there's, there's a revolving selection. around gambling. Um, oh, okay. I see. I think I think Barstool is a rocket ship. Actually, the founder, Dave Portner, made a video yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He literally called it a rocket ship. And uh, I, I just think that this company will be up there with the ESPNs and Fox Sports of mm -hmm. the world down the road. That's what I ask you about the YouTube because obviously Barstool does not have television presence per se in the traditional broadcast media on either over the air or on the air. They have basically YouTube, which is obviously streaming video, but um, the advantage that ESPN has is they always the additional revenues from advertisers on television, basically, which Barstool will have just uh, podcasting or uh, YouTube advertising and all that. So, if I were to guess what Barstool's next moves are, um, now that they work with an actual gambling company who has all the licenses, all the infrastructure needed, I think that they'll be making their own gambling and betting products. Sure, you yeah. could bet online with Barstool. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they made their own Barstool subscription service. That's like beyond what they're doing now, which is like its own mini Netflix, but for sports. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I predict that they would do. Which, one is, which one is the um, uh, most famous or popular podcast or program for uh, Barstool? I think we discussed this. They have um, 
one that's called um, Pardon My Take. Mm. That's the biggest, I believe. Uh, they have a, a girls one that is Call Her Daddy, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, we yeah, I remember joked that about that name. Um, but yeah. they have a lot of big shows. Okay. Um, but I think they're going to grow a lot. And then the other company, The Ringer. The which Ringer, was, right. That one I'm more familiar with. I, I listened to a few of the podcasts on a, on a regular basis. That one was founded by Bill Simmons. Um, so there were rumors that... So Bill Simmons has a partnership with HBO, which is owned by Time Warner. And uh, there were rumors that they were in talks to sell the number that was thrown out by Bill Simmons that he was asking reportedly. This is the Wall Street Journal. Um, was $100 million. And basically, the Ringer reportedly did about twenty million in revenue last year. Um, they they're growing. I think that they could pr probably hit twenty five, thirty million this year. Um, but he wanted a hundred million, which is steep, obviously, for twenty million revenue. That's not profit. That's revenue. The Ringer does have also, uh, I don't know, thirty different programs or yeah, they have about two hundred employees, I think. Um, Probably I don't know fifty plus podcasts. And they uh, they don't do just sports for the record. They do all yeah, kinds of sports variety and pop shows. Culture. Yeah, they do um, entertainment. They do sports. They do basically variety shows and any kinds of things. Yeah, and I think uh, uh and, oh yeah okay so then they were in talks with Time Warner. The price was too high. Basically, it looked like that Time Warner was looking to pay maybe sixty to eighty, but not willing to pay a hundred. Um, and then Spotify jumped in, who obviously, if those who remember, acquired Gimlet, which is another podcasting network, for 200-something million um, a year ago. And now they look it looks like they're in talks with The Ringer to buy them, too, and they maybe will pay that $100 million price because Spotify has the money right. and wants to start acquiring all these uh, shows. So uh, it'll be interesting, but it's funny that in the last two weeks, basically two – major kind of independent podcast networks that have popped up uh, are both looking to sell in the hundred millions range uh, hmm. as far as their valuation. Um, and I think it's only going to go up from there. Uh, we were discussing off off the show that uh, Joe Rogan is probably the first podcasting billionaire. Right. Um, but it just shows that the, the... I mean, to become billionaire, not yet. Will become. Yeah. <laughs> the numbers on him are pretty... It's hard to guess exactly, but for, if you, Jerogan's a pretty humble guy in his show. He doesn't act like it. But he if definitely you just, doesn't act like uh, the money he's making. If, if you run the numbers just based on his viewership, the guy is probably making by himself over fifty million dollars a year. Well, but keep in mind, it's not just the podcast. He's also doing the uh, UFC. Uh, no, no, no. I'm Come talking just the show. Oh, you're talking just talking revenues from the show? comedy and UFC. Yeah, because he's also a stand-up comedian. No, he I'm does the UFC uh, shows. Just through the podcast, the guy probably <clears> makes 50-plus <throat> million And that's year. based on downloads and yeah. uh, impressions or CPM for You can do podcasts. the math. If, the guy, if, if Joe Rogan has an average <clears> of, <throat> let's say, two uh, advertisers per show, and I would guess he charges a premium uh, he CPM. He doesn't have two advertisers per show. Well, I'm going to say two. He has like at least six. Well, at the beginning of the show, he spends like seven minutes introducing all his advertisers. I know, but doesn't he talk about them for a few minutes each? No, it's about sixty seconds and ninety seconds, something like that. I mean, he. I mean, he has like. Well, if you if you say he makes, let's say, a hundred <clears throat> CPM from his advertisers an episode, and he gets, it's estimated anywhere from five to ten million listeners per episode. Uh, and you can he does I don't know how many episodes a year, a hundred probably. Mm -hmm. You can do the math. The yeah. guy makes a lot of money. Um, and because I was putting it in perspective.